this this point in the season. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sue, we are sitting with Peter Mohan, the showrunner for The Listener. I wanted to get this one out of the way first because I was going through your, your CV here. Huge fan of Erie, Indiana. <laughs> Well, I did Erie and Indiana, The Other Dimension. It was okay. This, okay. The one I, I did that. was for Fox uh, Saturday Morning in the States. Okay. Uh, so it was the same uh, same concept, but yeah. uh, but uh, it wasn't that great, great uh, NBC uh, prime time show. Okay. I remember that one as well. That was, that was <laughs> I was all over both of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah great. But yeah, uh, you're in just finishing up fifth season of The That's List, That's correct. Right? How do you keep the stories fresh? Um... It's interesting. It's a. It's it's easy in a way because it's been kind of a different show every season. Mm -hmm. um, in the uh, third season, we took Toby out of the EMS and uh, made him uh, a member of the IIB, uh, and uh, you know that that definitely grew him as a character and, and his skills and his uh, commitment to to helping people. And then in season four, we actually. Um, uh, brought him along, made him more professional, had him study over the intervening time, and uh, to the point where he was actually carrying a gun, and, and actually, in the penultimate uh, episode of season four, he had to shoot someone and had to deal mm. with the repercussions of that. And so in episode five, um, in the intervening time since season four, uh, Toby has been working with Dev a lot since his mentor, Michelle, has been off on maternity leave for, yeah. for a number of months. And so, you know, once again, he's a, a more, even more integrated member of the team and, and has grown his skills quite a bit. And uh, one of the, uh, you know, that, that, that uh, brings a whole new vibe to it. But what we've also been able to do in season five is, uh, is uh, shift, uh, shift the stories a little bit. I've always believed that in its DNA, this is a genre show mm -hmm. because he is a mind reader. And it's something that uh, was veered away from at the end of season one. Uh, but in season five, we were able to delve into some special minds again and to, to make his gift and the repercussions of that a bit more central. So we were able to uh, investigate uh, cases where, for example, there's a, a suspect in a case that Toby's interviewing in the interrogation room. And uh, as he asks him a question, he goes in for a read and... Uh, realizes that it's another voice he's hearing. Oh my God. And so Toby is <laughs> so suddenly up against, he realizes he's up against uh, someone with multiple personalities. And so oh, wow. we're able to do a number of stories like this where, where the actual quirks of the mind uh, help uh, complicate and frustrate uh, the case of it. That's cool. Especially, well, and then, like you said, it is a genre of the show, but, and then by embracing that, it definitely makes itself different from all the other procedurals that are out there. Yeah. That's it, that's it. We, you know, we do a number of episodes this season where we really get to the sweet spot of, of uh, Toby's gift and, and tell stories that you couldn't tell on The Mentalist or any mm -hmm. other um, kind of uh, semi-procedural show like that. It's, uh, yeah. it's really it's really good stories. Cool. Even the episode where he had to shoot somebody, it was compounded by the fact that he saw the other person's point of view as he sh he saw himself shoot someone. Yeah. <laughs> so he was like looking at himself completely differently. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. He saw himself as a killer. Yeah. You know, that talk about super uh, PSTT. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, he was um, <laughs> like it wasn't bad enough. <laughs> yeah, that's you know that's one thing we really try to do. Try to make them specific to to his character and to the character to uh, to what someone who who was who did have that gift or curse or whatever it is would feel and and, yeah. uh, and do. Mm -hmm. And well, I like the fact that stuff like that will actually resonate through with the character, whereas if, say, no, to be really general, if it was a U.S. TV show, he might just go out, he'll shoot the bad guy, and that'll be it. Yeah. Yeah. But there's more repercussions in, in the world of the listener. Well, that's it. And, you know, it's, the great thing is with Toby is no matter how professional he becomes as a cop, he will always be a bit of an outsider because whereas the others come at it from having gone to police college and so on and so forth, he's the ultimate... Uh, he, he came at it from being a healer and, and from being the ultimate empath because he spends so much time in other mm -hmm. people's minds that he sees all the gray areas and all the pain yeah. and all the, the things that, uh, you know, uh, 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 that lurk in uh, the, the hearts of mortal men or whatever. But mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's uh, uh, he, you know, very different uh, f from the other cops. There will always be that separation. Yeah. Yeah. Now, was there a story arc in this season or prior seasons that was just so tough to break? Um, well, it, it, the, the first seasons before his powers were really codified and, mm -hmm. and uh, 
rules drawn were difficult. Uh, you know, in, in uh, season three, what you know, in season two there had also been suggestions that he was having brainstorms that may melt down his, his brain. But coming into season three, I'd um, had him control his gift, and he'd been doing biofeedback and so on and so forth. And so it became a much more reproducible gift. So, nice. so it becomes a great marriage of, of Michelle's uh, interrogation techniques and him being able to snatch what's brought to the front of the mind. Mm -hmm. so he doesn't have the, the bizarre distress beacons or anything he used to have right. the brainstorms. So. So it's, uh, it's yeah, it's it's, so people, it's easier for the audience to understand what yeah. he does and what his power is, and it's uh, it's uh, easier for them to use it in the context of a case. Cool, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Now, are you a believer in that kind of thing? Does that? Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, this, it's I, probably I, I, the best answer. Yeah, I'll keep I'll keep, yeah. I, I keep my uh, yeah. options open on that. Certainly, there are <laughs> there are things people. You know, know things uh, at levels that uh, that uh, aren't uh, quantifiable, and uh, don't know how how they do it. But uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's a possibility. Totally. I mean, we got, we only use like ten percent of our yeah, brain or something. Best. Yeah, That's what they say. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you might even do that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, yes, we were just wrapping up season five. And have you guys started toying with the idea of where you might go with the season six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. some ideas. Nice. Yeah, and actually, for for fans of uh, the show, uh, since season one, there will be uh, uh, some really satisfying uh, uh, revisits to some of the mythology of the, oh, the series, uh, relationship mythology, and uh, and that kind of thing. So that's. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a good season. Yeah, we were saying that in a couple of our earlier chats because the first couple of seasons you're very much establishing the world and the characters and now five seasons in you guys can play a bit because yeah. the dynamics are there and you know what they can do yeah. and what they can't do and, and then you can twist and bend rules a little more and have fun with it. Yeah, That's it. That's it's it. going to be good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's going to be a good one. Yeah. Peter, thank you very much. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks.